Uh, my name is Scott Plymail. I'm the Executive Director of the Community Health Resource Center, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Welcome. Come on in. We're going to be talking about stress management. Um, we'll go over some uh, very specific information that I can share with you about stress management. Also share with you some tips and what might be helpful in managing your stress. Uh, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them. Um, please be aware that we um, are limited in terms of our time because we have so many things going on today. Yeah. So we have about 10 to 15 minutes to share some information. So it's sort of a hurry up and de-stress situation here, okay? <laughs> So, um, as I mentioned, I'm the executive director here. I've been here for 11 years. Uh, we're going to be talking about stress management. You, Scott? Yes, my name is Scott Plymail. And you have, uh, if you don't have them already, you have this a copy of the, the presentation. So in terms of the Community Health Resource Center, today is an event that's part of our health education. Our four leaves, as you can see here in our logo, represent the four areas of service. So health education is one of them. Nutrition counseling is the second. Health screenings is the third. And behavioral health services is the fourth. In terms of health screenings, we do have health screenings going on today as part of the health fair. So the Comprehensive Stroke Care Center is doing blood pressure screenings, and we also have uh, uh, cognitive screenings by Savonics, and that is just down the hallway with room 106. So feel free to find your way down there. Again, those are two free screenings that you're welcome to. Today what we're going to be talking about is uh, stress management um, in terms of some biometrics, some mindfulness activities. Talk about what is stress, the impact of stress, how to manage that stress, and then, um, again, some biometrics and, uh, and some mindfulness activities, and then potentially debriefing, and if you do have any follow-up plans or would like to make an appointment, sort of how to do that. So that's the, the agenda. Again, we'll move through this as mindfully as we can about the limitations on time. So this is what an average day can sometimes look like. Competing demands on our schedule, uh, multiple things coming at us. In the spirit of, of technology, there are increasing ways of accessing us 24 hours a day, seven days a week through our smartphones, which the idea was convenience, but in some ways it requires that we multitask much more effectively. And that multitasking can sometimes be too much. So we'll practice in a second uh, what we call mindfulness, a very brief exercise, uh, which is designed to help reduce some of the input and clutter so that we can manage and control some of our reactions to that. So what is it? So here's the definition that Hans Seeley gave with regard to uh, stress. He's referred to as the father of stress because he has done a lot of research in this area. And uh, he found that stress occurs as a result of an imbalance between the demands on a person and their resources. Basically meaning that we live our lives and there are day-to-day -day stresses which can sometimes be very helpful. Our body is used to stress and can manage stress effectively in a lot of different situations. However, when those stressful situations reach a point where it's out of balance with our resources to meet those demands, that's when some unhealthy habits or even health challenges can develop. So the first thing that I want to introduce is the idea of monitoring your stress level in terms of demands on you. And then also do an inventory of what are your resources available to meet, meet those demands. So how do you cope? Good news is, is that we do have tremendous abilities within ourselves, physiologically, as well as outside of ourselves in terms of our environment, to help to adjust to these increasing demands or decreasing demands and stress. So this isn't a fixed problem. In a lot of cases, there are things that we can do in our day-to-day -day lives to adjust to those challenges and meet the increasing need. There are two different broad categories of stress in terms of acute and chronic. Acute stress are the situations where there's an immediate reaction to something. This could be a life event that can be destabilizing. It could be a health condition that rapidly develops. These most likely are stress situations that you see and you experience and they happen suddenly. Oftentimes, your reaction to that, you know. You can feel it, you can see the side effects of that stress, and potentially you can react to it. Some ways acute stress, while very uncomfortable, is sometimes easier to address because you see the impact of it more immediately. So an acute stress could be a family member gets, uh, gets sick, 
Uh, and acute stress could be a changing in your work situation, meaning potential termination, a uh, potential move, or people coming to live with you who you didn't expect, maybe older relatives that need that support. Another type of stress is the chronic. This is the ongoing stress that accumulates in gradual amounts over a course of time. These types of stress can be harder to measure. Similar to watching a child grow, if the child's with you every day, you usually don't see those changes in growth because they're incremental. The same with stress. You won't see those until it's added up to a point where there can be significant health challenges. One example of that is hypertension. Hypertension is one of those situations, potentially because of diet or exercise or how stress is managed, that it can creep up over time to a point where there are very significant health challenges that you could be facing because of that. Keeping in mind internal and external stresses. So there are internal stresses. Those are the, in, those are the stresses that are coming kind of within us. And you can see some examples here, your thoughts, your feelings, your worries, what's going on sort of inside of you. And then there are the external stresses. What's going on in the world around you that might impact you in terms of your stress level? These are the events sometimes that we can't control for, like our work situation, like our social situation. Um, whether we're moving in an unfamiliar area, the way people treat us, those types of things that we may or may not be able to control for in terms of their reaction to us. What we do in response of that, or our coping, is of course under our control. Now, what if we pause here for a second? Um, I do want to give you all some very concrete tips in terms of managing stress. One of those concrete tips is uh, called mindfulness. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of that word, mindfulness. Okay, so several people are familiar with that then. Sounds like, the, sounds like a sort of 50-50 here in terms of people who have experience with that or have heard of it. Mindfulness basically is an activity, an, an active activity, where you are being conscious and focusing on one thing. That one thing could be a noise, it could be your heartbeat, it could be whatever that sound is or thing is that you want to give your attention to. So back to technology and how it has impacted our lives. This is nothing new. Over the course of time, there are increases in technology and increases in demands on our time. We have to juggle more things and multitask. In order to become better at focusing our energy and our concentration, the idea of mindfulness was developed and researched and found to be very helpful in terms of both physical challenges as well as reducing the psychological challenges of stress. So mindfulness, and I know some of you all have done this activity in the past, but mindfulness basically is finding a comfortable position and focusing on one thing, whether that's a noise, a heartbeat, a clock tick, a sound. If it were quieter here today, I'd be using a bell. I would ring the bell and you could focus your attention on that bell. Because there's more noise here, we're gonna be focusing on your breath. So, the activity, you're welcome to participate in this or not. It's entirely up to you, but I do want to walk you through a mindfulness activity so you can use that to de-stress if you need to. So, if you have something in your hands, I'd recommend you sort of put it to the side if you want to participate so you're not holding anything. Um, putting your feet flat on the ground, <coughs> soles sort of grounded. Your back relatively straight so you're not hunched over, so you have relatively good posture. Your hands face up or face down. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed or open, whatever feels most comfortable to you. And again, you don't have to participate in this if you don't want to. So the idea of mindfulness basically is that you are in this space in this time and you're gonna be giving concentrated effort and attention to a single thing. That thing is gonna be your breath. I'll sort of walk you through that focus so that I can help you return and sort of train to focus in on that one thing. You're going to hear noises, you're going to have thoughts, you're going to have the list of to-dos you need to do today running through your mind. Just acknowledge those things and then let them go. Any questions about this activity? Okay. We'll do this for about a minute to a minute and a half. We won't do it very long, but I do want to allow you an opportunity to experience what it is like. So again, find a comfortable position, eyes open, eyes closed, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Palms up, palms down. And take a deep breath in. And naturally release your breath as you feel comfortable. I'm going to take a picture. Mm -hmm. So I will know. Mm -hmm. 
Take a deep breath in. And relax. And focus on your breath. You'll hear noises. Just let those noises or thoughts come in. And then focus on your breath. Let the thoughts come in and then go. Concentrate on your breathing as you breathe in, nice healthy oxygen, and breathing out. And this is where your focus is. Concentrate on your breath. The oxygen coming in, filling your lungs, and releasing your breath. Concentrating on your breathing, breathing in, and breathing out. Connecting with your breath, focusing on your breath, and releasing your breath. Gradually, bring your focus back into the room. Change your focus from your breath into this space. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Gradually begin to come back into the room with your focus and your attention. This is an exercise we took about a minute to a minute and a half to do. I know there's a lot going on today. But that's a good example of what happens in ordinary life. There's always going to be noise. There's always going to be the to-dos. Your mind will potentially always be racing and wondering about these things. And sometimes that can be the cause of that stress. So being able to build the muscle, as I like to call it, that muscle being the ability to really focus your attention on one single thing. A lot of people are doing this to help address significant health challenges they have because it does reduce the level of tension in their body, the muscle tension, the high blood pressure potentially, um, and, and it can feel good. So we'll keep moving on here. Those are the internal and external stressors. Um, any questions before I kind of move on to the next slide? Yeah. Do these stresses that you put, um, I didn't see any um, caregiver. Caregiver stress? Yes. So as a caregiver for someone else? Yes. Yes, that can be very stressful caring for the needs of other people. Um, there can be internal, at least in terms of this slide, there can be internal and external stresses. In relation to caring for someone else, there are the internal thoughts, feelings, it can be depression, it can be anxiety, it can be the weight of responsibility to take care of someone else. There are also these external stressors that come with that, including the health and well-being of someone else, which we have very little control over. They have the decisions to take their medications or not taking them to and from doctor's appointments. So that can be stressful. So it's important to understand how to respond to those. It's also important to understand how your body is naturally responding to those stressful circumstances. So in terms of the human species, the human species really hasn't been out of the cave for that long. A lot of our physiological responses to stress are related to how we need to survive when we were hunters and gatherers, when we had to survive the best way we could. So when we experience stress, we have an, a reaction where adrenaline is released in our body and we need to respond to whatever that stress is. Maybe it's someone's about to attack us. Going back to our times as hunter and gatherers, potentially an animal was about to attack us and we needed to figure out how to protect ourselves. So adrenaline comes in very handy in those situations. We experience the stress, we experience the adrenaline increase. That adrenaline increase basically funnels uh, energy to our muscles so we can get out of there if we need to or fight whatever that threat is if we need to. Unfortunately, stress now generally is not gonna be an animal attacking us. So our physiological responses to our stress don't necessarily work as well as they could. Another example of our physiological response, meaning our physical response to stressful situations, can be cortisol. Cortisol 
is a naturally occurring substance in our body. It can be very helpful, um, especially if we were hunters and gatherers. And if we were very scared in terms of being threatened for our lives, our body would release cortisol. Cortisol allows us to maintain fatty tissue in our body so that we can use it later in the event that we can't hunt and gather anymore. So the adrenaline reaction elevates our heart rate, gets blood to our muscles more quickly. The cholesterol or the uh, cortisol um, gets uh, glucose in the bunch of bloodstream, enhances uh, brain functioning. Um, it also allows for uh, fat storage. So you know this this right here, this <laughs> ring. Uh, is a, a good example of what happens as we store fat over time as we're exposed to stress. Uh, because we, at least physiologically, feel like we are threatened in terms of availability of food, so we feel we need to store it physiologically. We're not conscious of that response, it just happens automatically. So that's another important thing to recognize as you experience stress is how are you adapting to that stress in terms of food intake, for example. So these are se several long-term impacts of stress in terms of some of the health consequences. Heart disease, depression, obesity, memory impairments, skin condition. Um, also, you can experience headaches, trouble sleeping. You'll want to think about what are the impact on your body, which we just talked about. What are the impact on your thoughts? So what are your thought process? How is it changing? Is it more agitated? Are you more depressed? Are you more anxious? And then your feelings in terms of anger, frustration, and then your behaviors impacting. Are you acting more irritable? Are you acting more angry? And is that impacting your relationships? Which can be helpful. So some warning signs. What's causing you stress at that particular time? Getting to know your response to stress, what are your triggers, and how are you reacting to those? So what can you control? A lot of these elements of stress in our life, we do have a lot of control over. We might not think we do, but we do. And in some cases, it might be really helpful to get a counselor, maybe a friend, but even better would be a professionally trained person who can offer assistance in addressing some of these areas of stress. So they can call attention to the stress, its impact, and then of course your reaction to that impact. So can you say no to anything? Are you able to establish boundaries around incoming stress? Are you able to adapt or change the way you're thinking about stress or your feelings about whatever that stressful situation is? Getting some support and potentially reflection from a professional can be very helpful to put that stress into context. And Community Health Resource Center has uh, some really amazing counselors here who have a lot of experience in helping people manage stress and manage them, manage them their way through either correct, uh, acute stress or chronic stress situations. Some other some basic tips here, uh, drinking enough liquids, getting enough sleep, taking breaks throughout the day, getting regular exercise, and of course managing your environment. We've talked a little bit about relaxation techniques, so mindfulness was one of them. There are many others out there, and technology can be our friend in this case. So there are a lot of applications on your phone and your smartphone that have what we call guided imagery. Guided imagery is basically where someone is talking and guiding you through a process of relaxation. So you're focusing on different parts of your body, you're targeting those parts of your body with a relaxation technique so that you can release tension and relax, guided by one of those techniques. Yoga, Tai Chi, a walk, some exercise, a massage, hobbies, what do you enjoy doing? Very helpful in terms of managing stress. Now, it, it is easier in some ways to say these things than do these things, so finding a champion who will support you in addressing these needs, whether it's a friend, whether you keep a journal to track your progress over time, that will be important to sort of hold yourself accountable for addressing some of these issues. So a mindfulness exercise. Um, we don't have enough time to go through um, a full 
uh, visualization exercise. But what if we do a really brief one, another brief exercise similar to mindfulness? Um, this time we're gonna be focusing on our shoulders. A lot of times the shoulder area can hold a lot of tension. Again, back to what happens when we get uh, fearful of a threat in our environment, which can introduce stress, is we can bring our shoulders up to our ears and that creates muscle tension. You can feel it if you bring your muscle uh, shoulders up to your ears, you can feel that. And a lot of times that will create buildup um, of unhealthy toxins in your shoulder muscles that do need to get flushed out. So we'll do a little exercise here to help flush out some of those, some of those uh, toxins that are building up there. So what if we start just by rolling our shoulders forward? Just let them come to, close to your ears and fall back down. And then rotate the other way, whatever way you're going, just rotate the way back. Good. And as you rotate them back or forward, just let the muscles, just let them relax and let your shoulders fall. Okay, after you've done that, just find a comfortable position in your chair um, with a relatively good posture, feet flat on the ground. The hands can just be uh, holding something uh, in your lap, palms up, palms down. And we're gonna couple, take a couple of deep breaths. And we're gonna breathe in. You can do this with your eyes open or eyes closed, whatever you want. But as you breathe in, I think we target the oxygen to go to the shoulder muscles. Breathe the oxygen in, and as you breathe it in, target that area of your body. And as you breathe out, let the tension, the muscle stress, breathe that out. Breathe in nice, healthy oxygen. That oxygen is what lets your muscles do what they need to do. They all need oxygen. And then breathe out all the stress. Breathing in nice, healthy oxygen. This is rejuvenating oxygen. Gives your body what you need. Gives your shoulder muscles what they need to move. And breathing out the stress and the tension. Breathing in, nice healthy oxygen, and breathing out, the tension and stress. Good. And now if you bring your attention back into the room. These are some resources that you're welcome to look up on the internet. You do have uh, your packet, which has all the slides here, so you can reference that for future use. Um, this was a very brief, like I said, hurry up and de-stress at the beginning of this presentation, a very brief overview of stress and stress management. If you'd like to have a follow-up appointment, give us a call or we can call the front desk here, ask to speak with me or any of the other providers and we'll be happy to go into more detail. Don't forget, uh, we have cognitive screenings down the hall in room 106. It's an amazing opportunity to get some more information on your cognitive and memory functioning. Um, it's confidential, uh, but can be really informative. As well as a cooking demonstration, and you can see the materials are going out right now. Have a great day, enjoy the rest of the fair, and uh, hopefully it won't be very stressful. Yeah. <laughs>